Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, hopefully, to a fantastic 2021. Let's hope it is. Let's go positively into the new year. Please let it be good. Um, I'm here to tell you about how to use the Aniseed cat rig that I've recently made for you all and for future projects of my own. <clears throat> now, um, if you've never used a template file before, uh, one of the files that will be included in the Patreon uh, download link will be a template file. The other one will be an Aniseed test file, which is just a piece of animation that I've made with the Aniseed character. But the other one is the template file that you'll need. Now, if you've never imported a model before, what you have to do is go over to your library section and right click it and then open library. And essentially what a library is, is a folder. So find a folder with um, the template file in, choose that folder, and then within that folder is the template file. Here it is there. Once you've got that, you drag the template into the node view like that. And then this is what will appear. So you get this big pink box with um, some instructions and how to use <clears throat> various bits and pieces of the rig. Um, you've got inputs to the main group of Aniseed. Let me just make this bit bigger here. You've got um, two inputs to the Aniseed group. You've got the main peg, which is here. And then you've got another one, which is for a camera peg. So what I'm gonna do is quickly create a camera. You don't have to do this, but um, this is how you would set up your character if it had a camera. So you have a camera there with its own corresponding peg, and then you plug the peg of, from the camera into this socket there. And that means that the control panel, which will appear in due time, will always be level with the camera's viewpoint. It'll make sense once you look into it, but just suffice to say, you plug it in like that. And then to attach the Anasi character to the composite, you use the left-hand side um, one into there. The right-hand one you leave alone because that's for the master controllers to use. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's for the master controllers to use. So you just leave that alone. You plug that one in like that, and then there he is. Um, now, in order to get his control panel appearing, you have to make sure that in preferences, and you go to advanced, the advanced display box is ticked. Otherwise you won't be able to do what I'm about to show you. Once you do that, you'll have these pull down menus here when you have a camera view. And incidentally, you need to create a brand new camera view. So you have two. So you've got this sort of two vision of the same scene going on at the moment. On one of these displays, you get the pull down menu and you pull it down to Aniseed MC. And that way you see two displays at the same time. One which is the control panel and the other one which is whatever's coming out of here. You also have an Aniseed display which just will always, always, always show you just the Aniseed character. But let's go for now to Aniseed MC. Okay. And just using this button, it will always recenter it to the center, providing you organize this camera setup because it will always be in the center of the screen and, and lined up zoomed perfectly, providing you make sure that the peg of the camera is in that configuration. Right. All of that stuff out of the way, now we can actually enjoy ourselves. Right. So this is the character of Aniseed. And let me just move that out of the way so you can make him a little bit bigger. So what you do to operate him is the following. On this part of the control panel here are the VPEGs, and I'll turn each one on and off uh, so you can see what they all do. This master one is essentially a way of moving the entire character around easily like that, see? So it's just a way of doing it. For actually moving the character, I would advise you to grab hold of his body, but in terms of positioning him ready to go for you know, sort of layout purposes, the word aniseed is the right way to go. All right. So there's that. The mouth has a set of VPEGs here, and these are a new feature of Harmony 20, which are weighted deformers. And what they allow me to do is kind of morph 
an existing drawing. These mouths are drawing substitutions and they have a uh, synced uh, link between the cheeks here and the jaw as well as well as the teeth inside the mouth so you won't see if i click that you won't see the teeth until you open the mouth because they're not actually part of this drawing layer just go with it at the moment if you don't know what i'm talking about anyway so this is that i'll just leave that visible so you can kind of see what's going on so these allow you to manipulate the mouth and you can you can pull them around like that you can rotate them you can squish them and skew them and do all sorts of things if you want to get a little bit more control over that if you want to reset them at any time just click the vpeg there and then press the reset or transformation button and it will reset them to where they need to go and then you're back to how it was before the face has a vpeg as well you can just move the entire face around like a kind of mask and the shadow of his head also has a VPEG. And if I just move that around, you'll see the sort of red highlight move around there like that. If you want to move the shadow of the body, that's just a drawing substitution. So you just click from one to another like that. Okay, there's how that works. Let me just turn that off. And obviously if you want to turn all VPEGs on and off, you can just press that button and they all come on and off. Now, the eyes are drawing substitutions which you can click away like that if you want to. However, I've got a slider here that allows him to blink pretty quickly and I can do either eye individually like that, which is really good. Um, the collar can be manipulated in exactly the same way. Again, it's just a drawing substitution. There's nothing fancy about it, but again, up and down there you go if you want that. The tail can be manipulated like this. So you can rotate and move the tail around. If you want a little bit more control, you can click the actual tail itself and hit the, what do they call it? The show deformers button. And then you can manipulate the deformer to taste if you want to as well. Turn that off. Okay. Now, you can obviously move the eyes around like you would want to. Um, just bear in mind that obviously when he blinks, the blink cuts the eye, but the eye does not cut the pupil. So I like to have my characters have a little bit of extending of the pupil. That's the reason why I haven't done that. So just be mindful of that if you're moving his eye around. There you go. Uh, the eyebrows have deformers in, so if you want to have him have a different expression, you can do that. And the mouths have different mouth positions total of nine so you just clack away uh, using drawing substitution backwards and forwards to get those there we go like that and um, you can change his expression if you wanted to go from happy to sad just by clicking this lever over and then you can get a sort of more sad expression out of him there there we go oops yeah make sure it doesn't go to no exposure otherwise we won't have a mouth at all now here's the more magical one which everyone wants to see Here's head movement. There we go. Now, this is what's known as a master controller, and it allows you to manipulate his head in pretty much any direction, well, most directions. Um, as soon as it gets to the profile, it'll click over to a completely different sort of logic. So the mouth works in the same way as before. You're not having to do anything different. But of course, these are totally different drawings here. So they look and feel totally different. But the way you manipulate them is exactly the same. There we go, like that. And the same with the expression, you can make him happy and sad in exactly the same way. There we go. So, and then his head can go all the way around. Now there are a few, a couple of little ugly frames there. So be mindful of that. If you want to sort of make that frame look nicer, you can always use alt and backwards and forwards to shift that back. Oh, maybe not actually what I'm talking about. I think it's, ah, no, this is what you can do. Um, no, no, you can't. So what you have to do is just be mindful of those little frames there that are a little bit ugly when you try and go from position to position. Um, like any rig, there's a few things which, had I just a little bit more time, I would probably refine this, that and the other, have some sort of override switch to make that completely disappear. 
the mouth is actually cutting into the head. I remember now why I didn't, wasn't able to get that working. Um, and what I could have done is have a switch to sort of stop that happening or something like that. But that would take time. And how often is he turning his head away anyway? So, you know, if you wanted to do it, what I would recommend is you get him to that position and then sort of shift these elements back manually so that you kind of get that frame for those particular bits. But it's such a small little thing. Most of the time it's not really an issue, so I didn't think it was that important. But here we go, here's his head. Um, there are certain things to bear in mind when you're moving a master control puppet. When he gets to the mid position, his head literally uh, flips. So you won't be able to keyframe from here to here. You'd have to keyframe from here to here, so for here, and then create another keyframe here and then over here. So that way it would sort of create that transition in a way that makes sense to the software, if that hopefully makes sense. So again, from you keyframe here and here, and then you keyframe here and here, and then that way it would sort of work out how to do it. You put the keyframes to, next to each other on the timeline like that in the midpoint. Play around with them, that's all I say. I'll, I'll show you that, in fact, just to make sure that we're clear about that, because that's the thing that foxes a lot of people when they're using master controllers. So here we go, from here to, come on, to here will not work. When I do that, it'll flip, you see. So what you have to do is make sure that it goes from there to there, and then from there to there, and then that'll make sense. Let me just do that. There we go. Now, obviously, this is a bad bit of animation, but you see what I mean? You have to kind of make sure that that flip is catered for in the animation. Now, of course, the way I animate is stop motion anyway, so I don't really do this kind of keyframe, keyframe stuff. I just literally hand animate the thing <laughs> backwards and forwards. You can also use the arrow keys to move... Um, the master controller around, which I actually find quite handy. If you really want to create keyframes for your animation from one position to another, and you're able to put eases on them and things like that, you can do that using a script, which I'll put in the description uh, of the video here. So one of the cats will show you in a moment. And uh, you can pop along to that and download that script. It works extremely well, and I have used it for a few things. But as I say, most of the time as a stop motion animator, I just thunder through and get on with it so hope this will inspire and interest you some of the rig if you have a look at uh, the way i've designed this let me just have a, i'll show you some of the rig i've tried to keep it as clean and tidy as possible some of it will make sense some of it will be so complicated to see at first glance you will be befuddled if you're brand new to it do not be frightened by this eventually i will come up with, I've got to write uh, the next part of the um, the guide and recipes and things like that, which I'll break it all down into understandable little chunks that make sense of it all. So don't be intimidated by it is all I'm saying. The whole point of this rig is to just sort of muck about and see what you can plunder from it and other bits will befuddle you. I totally understand that. Do not worry about it. Just wait. I will come up with the goods very soon, but I had to sort of make some stuff in order to test out some theories and to figure things out. So that's the reason. And there's a kind of gift I kind of wanted to give uh, Anna Seed uh, to you for being so, so fantastic this year. Um, hope you get on all right with him, just animating him and getting used to the techniques. Um, there is no set way of animating anything. So apart from that little thing that I told you about, about putting keyframes in the center, there's not really anything else. Um, you can animate this character literally in any way you want. Oh, the one other thing I forgot to mention is that he has a deformer in the center there. So that allows you to move uh, the body around in that way uh, if you want to as well. All right, so that's the only other deformer. <laughs> Completely forgot. And you can manipulate his uh, headphones there as well, which is kind of nice. Um, hope you enjoy him. Good luck with animating him and good luck to us all for 2021. Bye.